My name is Alina Adams. I was born in Odessa, USSR. I wrote two books set in the Soviet Union. My daughter was born in America. I'm going to tell her about the Soviet experience through books. This week's book for understanding the Soviet Union, The Patriots by Sana Krasikov. So the first thing that I see when looking at this book, close up of the cover, look at the aesthetic, of course. Love the pastel colors. Mm. Big pastel girl. Anyway, the opposite of pastel, <laughs> the Great Depression. <laughs> wow, that was a smooth transition. She's going to do AP English next fall. So here's the thing. I found the Great Depression to be a really interesting part of this story because I was born in the Soviet Union and I lived there in the 1970s. And at the time in the 1970s when we immigrated, everybody wanted to go to America or Canada or Australia or Israel, but the fact is everyone wanted to leave. In the Patriots, in the 1930s, the characters are American Jews who go back to the Soviet Union. Now, in their defense, and I covered this a little bit in my book, My Mother's Secret, a novel of the Jewish Autonomous Region, where I also had some Americans who had moved to the Soviet Union. In their defense, two things. First, they were true believers. They really did believe that communism was going to save the world and bring equality and end racism and end sexism and all of those things. They really believed it. But also, you have to remember that in the 1930s, you do have the Depression. So people living in America are having a hard time finding work, and there is this promise come to the Soviet Union and there will be work. So while from the perspective of someone who lived in the Soviet Union in the 1970s, who would be insane enough to leave America especially Jews, which these characters are. Who, what Jews would be insane enough to leave America and come to the Soviet Union? It makes no sense. From the perspective of the 1930s and the Great Depression, you could see what they were thinking. When he learns that Florence's KGB files have been opened... Wow. That's not a question. What? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm reading it. See how riveting this is? Wait, so this is it two stories? Is it Florence's story and then her son's story? Yes, it's very much a uh, family saga in that we get multi-generation, which I happen to love, which is my favorite thing. I read family sagas, I write family sagas, I know, you mock. <laughs> but it's very much my favorite genre, and this is more of a literary take. So the mother returns home and then the son returns? Yes, actually, it, it's very confusing. But what it happens is, so the mother is an American living in Brooklyn, and she moves to the Soviet Union. She has her son there, and then they immigrate back to the United States along with those of us who left in the 70s, 80s, and 90s. So again, it's, uh, it's multiple stories, but it's mostly Florence's story. It's more the son learning his mother's story and a little bit about him. So one theme I've noticed, this is the third video, right, is there's a lot of storytelling from generation to generation. Yes, yes, very much that. Well, A, I just happen to love that kind of thing, because if you're doing a family saga, almost by definition, you have one generation learning about another. But in this particular one, just like in our earlier one, Something Unbelievable, you do have a case of a younger person learning about a parent's or a grandparent's past, which helps to explain who they are in the present day. Lightning round time. Lightning round. Pacing, fast, medium. So, medium. It's definitely medium because it's literary. It's not a mystery. It's not a romance. It's not a genre book. So things take time to unfold, but it's also multi-generational that it bounces back and forth in time periods. So I'd say medium pacing. And how is this told? First person, third person? Third person. Third person, but third person um, with through the eyes of one particular person. Sometimes it's the mother, sometimes it's her son. Now, this is, I find this important when I read a book. Chapters. Long, short, flow together? Because some books... Well, I don't think that one person's long is another person's long. So, um, would this be long for you? I mean, it's a tiny font. Um, this long, this is one chapter. Well, this is actually, you know, five, six pages. Short it's chapters. Okay. Short chapters. It's okay. okay. So I short. think short chapters are great. You know, keeps you wanting to read the book. You have mm -hmm. to keep turning the page. <laughs> <laughs> Who do you think is going to pick up this book and relate to it? That is an interesting question, because your first impulse is to say, well, this is for Soviet immigrants. But, you know, my first book, my first historical fiction, The Nesting Dolls, which was also set in the Soviet Union, was a multi-generational family saga. And at first you think, oh, only people with a similar, you know, Russian, Soviet, Jewish background. But I've done talks to book clubs that were Dominican 
and Mexican and Italian and Chinese and everybody says oh that's just like my grandmother so at this the surface says oh it's for people with a similar background but it's basically anyone who has a mother has been a mother or really anyone who is either an immigrant themselves or has an immigrant relative which in America is pretty much everybody so I think just because it takes place in a particular time period and in a particular setting doesn't mean it will only appeal to people to whom that is a familiar time period or setting. Fun. All right. Next.